and all kinds of elastic, and the elastic came in pretty well with some of the, the uh, figures to keep them from falling apart and such. Uh, but anyway, uh, I went to, when Walt came by to see how things were going, I said, um, I haven't received any information of how much I'm allowed for each doll for, for buttons and clothes, you know, the fabrics and so on. And one eyebrow went up. He was kind of disappointed with me. And he said, Alice, he said, we have a building over there filled with people that do the pencil work. He said, you're to design the best costume that any woman from the age of one to a hundred would love to have herself, have the doll and have it just as beautiful as possible. And he said, they're going to figure out where you're going to get the money. <laughs> And, and he did. All those costumes are fantastic. And he said, do you know why? And I said, um, I know you like nothing but the best. And he said, that's right. He said, I want to give everybody more than they expect. And they'll come back. And they'll trust you. I'll clap he for said, that even now. He said, if you cheat them, you'll never see hiding her hair of them again. Yeah. That was it. We all knew that. <laughs> the other thing was that when you worked with it, you had a lot of people working with you, and your neck was on the line for what you told them to do and how it was to be done. But he would come and see you personally, and he would talk to you about what you were doing, what you were designing, and so forth, and he would say, that sounds good, let's do that, and when will you have it planned for me? And he'll say, i say, well, maybe next Wednesday? And he said, yes, next Wednesday at 2 o'clock. He would never write anything down, but he was there Wednesday at 2 o'clock, and you better be there. But uh, that was because of you were just seeing him, but they were all hearing what was going on. But we didn't have all kinds of meetings and such that went on all the time. We, we had a very uh, positive meeting. Everything was planned out. Uh, and it ha I think I had maybe three meetings with, with the uh, sewing girls and such, all with Walt. And that was it. The rest of it, I was transferring to them, but I was responsible for everything that was happening. But we didn't have any names as far as a president or a vice president or, or uh, the peon or whatever. We were just all by first name, and nobody had any, um, how would you say, uh, somebody that you had to meet with every other day or every day to see what you were doing. It was done. Well, that was a beautiful way to work. X. It was lovely. After 20 some years in animation, Walt brought you over to Imagineering, and, and it wasn't too long after that that he asked you to write a script for the pirates. But my recollection is you'd never written a script before. Why did he have faith in you to be able to do that? It, it was amazing the way Walt was able to uh, find the uh, talents that we had that we didn't know we had. And uh, for instance, when I moved over from animation and uh, into imaginary, and I wrote a scrub hat for the first time. And uh, I know this is fun. I like it. <laughs> and uh, the more I got into it, the more I liked it because it wound up being that I get a direct uh, uh, command performance from the man himself who called me up to his office and said, I want you to do script for the pirates of the Caribbean. And so I researched what I could and I learned to say, ah, there you come. <laughs> <laughs> and 
talk to old fire engine. <laughs> and uh, if you're to blame, except for the fact that we all do that. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> impression that uh, uh, Walt sort of was born with an automatic secret weapon and that um, he never was interested in what you've done. He was much more interested in well, what you're going to do next. Uh, and I didn't quite understand. I, mean, I was only 23 when I went over there, so I didn't know how a big company like that would work, but I could see there was this difference because Walt was not a guy that was, you'd say, as a classical company president that would issue orders and then the orders would flow down to the layers of management and force all the worker bees in the bottom to do what the big boss said. It was never like that. Walt wandered around and always talked to people, so I saw this thing that uh, it was like the entire Walt Disney Productions lot was a team instead of like conventional teams like today. And uh, he would just wander around and talk to people. Uh, I didn't really see what you'd call meetings as such, if uh, two or three people were standing in a hall, I guess that would be a meeting. Uh, it's really very simple. There's nobody doing minutes or typing anything like that. Uh